Welcome to Singapore Budget Forum 2019, where in just under 60 minutes, we're going to tackle the key highlights of the budget, the biggest takeaways, and what's behind the numbers for you. We have quite a distinguished panel tonight, several economists, a tech expert. For a ground-up point of view, we're going to hear the view from the business sector and, of course, the viewpoint from academia. I'm Michelle Martin, together with JP Ong. Yes, Michelle, so much, so many topics to talk about, so little time, but luckily we have a jam-packed panel to help us out with that today. For we have PW. WC's tax leader, Chris Wu, joining us today. We have uh, Alvin Liu, one of the economi- lead economists over at UOB, representing the Singapore Business Federation. We also have Ernie Ko and Professor Sumit Argawal from NUS Business School. Welcome, gentlemen. Good evening. Great to have you with us. If we could start with your overall impressions of the budget. Professor, let's start with you. So I think it's a very balanced budget that has been inclusive of the elderly, of the poor, of the needy. And actually, of also thinking about the very precious resources that we need to worry about. What I think was special was the emphasis on the technology to grow small businesses and also the role of technology to help employees to retrain themselves and become better in an economy that is becoming much more competitive and internationally. So how Singaporeans can use AI and also more advanced technologies I think that was what stood out to me. Ernie, what were your biggest takeaways? In a business perspective, I think uh, it's a carryover of a 2018 budget. A lot of it and a little bit improvement, a lot of uh, targeted approach. Uh, They are a little bit disappointed with regards to the labor issues. Mm. And uh, they are using uh, the trade associations and all to help the, the small companies. Okay, and Alvin is an economist with UOB. Alvin, what was the reaction like when you heard the budget? Um, as I was talking to you just now, when is he started off with on security topics, right? I thought that was quite a interesting way of opening the budget, and that probably also reflects the times that we are in, uh, not just with our con- our major trading partners, but with our neighbors and the need to increase that security and diplomacy spending right by to 30% versus 28% last year mm. but uh, also one point that we took away as we men- I mentioned to you earlier that where I was working the reaction was fairly quiet when the whole process of the budget speech was being delivered and pretty much so if you look at the background of the parliament as well not very big reactions from the people in the parliament so no cheers no cheers uh, I think it was a lot of things was expected and probably mm. there was not anything that really stood out to really have a big uh, uh, exciting effect. Okay. Uh, Chris, was it a fairly conservative budget in your opinion? No, I don't think uh, it was. Uh, but there is an unsung hero in terms of what was released in terms of, it's always, as you say, the devil's in the details. Yes. Mm-hmm. And something which just came out is in terms of them encouraging the funds industry Uh, Certainly, uh, the government's been listening to a lot of feedback as to what they want to try and do. And the funds industry is a very important element because it's an alternative capital market side and is there to really help boost the SMEs. It's helped to fund the startups, the VCs, do help to promote new technology, uh, new ways of doing businesses. And certainly in terms of the older economies too, it offers them alternatives of funds as well. So that part is really not quite mentioned by Mr. Hing because he does this, it's in the details Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm happy to talk more about it later. Yeah, I mean, the way you look at it also, I mean, one of the big thrusts of the budget and of the economy here is really just trying to lift up a lot of these small and medium uh, enterprises also. Um, is this the uh, idea of bringing a lot and making it easier for some of these angel investors, some of these venture capitalists actually to try to lift uh, the the uh, the plight of these uh, small and medium enterprises? And do you think that's actually going to help out? I'd also like to ask um, uh, Ms. Um, er- Ernie about this also. I think the, the venture capitalist is one element of business. Mm-hmm. The other element of a business, especially for a small and medium-sized enterprise, human capital, the, uh, the access to 